<laughs> this is so freaking weird being in front of the camera, bro. I haven't done this in like in years, literal years. Like, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of nervous right now. <laughs> like when I retired, I really just focused on helping other creators. So like I've always been behind the scenes, behind the camera. And now I'm in front of the camera again. So it's like, damn. Kind of missed it, kind of didn't. <laughs> the audience is way bigger today than in 2011. What do you mean by that? What's up, guys? Um, yeah, I haven't really been on camera in a minute uh, to actually like make a legit video here. So bear with me. I'm trying to get back into the swing of things of being a like a YouTuber. I'm not. I'm not really considering myself a YouTuber. I just have more time to start making videos here on my channel so i'm gonna start doing it. well actually that's not even the case dude like there's not really too much i can say but like i need to start producing videos again because this game skate 4 is it it's coming sooner than you think okay so like i need to obviously have an active viewage so i can get enough data so that you know algorithm can know where to push it out to so i can just have a dead channel and just start uploading and i have to really you know start putting in some data, you know? So that's why I'm doing this. And also because I miss y'all, honestly. Like I, I've been looking at some of y'all's comments. A lot of you guys DM me still, like on my Instagram, um, sometimes on Twitter. And you guys are like, Albert, when are you gonna upload another video? Albert, where are you? What are you doing? Are you okay? Are you alive? Like I didn't even tweet for like a year on Twitter and I was getting a lot of people saying, are you okay? I mean, that really touched my heart because it's like, damn, you guys, there's still people out there that still care a lot about me. So I was down, here we go. And I was like, yeah, let me let me try to, you know, figure this out. Like it's already in a good time frame where I need to start uploading content. So why not? Right. I'm not really a big fan of the premiere feature on YouTube. I don't really think it works at all, but, you know, it is what it is. By the way, Jeff, if you're watching this video, please click off. I don't want you here, period. <laughs> all right. So this uh, boardroom um, is pre-recorded. You guys didn't know that. But anyways, that's besides the point. Uh, there's going to be, I think, a lot of reveals of what was shown to the council a long time ago, especially with the first round, the one I was part of. Um, we saw some crazy things and I'm pretty excited for a lot of the things and I'm kind of skeptical about some of the things and there's some some small things that I'm like, bro, that's childish. That's like boring. That's like, really bro? Like you couldn't think of something better to do? <laughs> like there's a little bit of things like that that was like, wow, I don't even know why they have that in the game, but hopefully don't show that here. Um, if they don't, I'm not gonna talk about it because I probably don't, I don't think I can talk about it. Then again, I really don't care no more. <laughs> I really don't. All right, here we go. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. I still think it should have been called Skate 4, by the way. Hey Ain't no uh, one going to call it Skate. I'm sorry. Skate, and this is episode four of the boardroom. The setup looks a little bit different today because we are deep in the bowels of EA Capture Lab here at EA Vancouver, uh, where all the motion Same lab happens. that was in the today we've got a little, little bit of a teaser trailer, I think it was. I forgot it was, was called. Game, our skateboarding and our onboard mechanics. And we've got a couple key members of our gameplay crew here to shed some light on how we work and the process of bringing it all to life. Uh, can you guys give us some quick intros? Sure. Hi, I'm Ryan. I'm the lead gameplay designer. Uh, I help define how our various gameplay functions should work. Hey, I'm Matt. I'm the animation director, and I'm responsible for how the characters move. Hey, I'm Lance. I'm the lead gameplay programmer, uh, and I guess I'm responsible for building things and making all I that guess. stuff work. <laughs> all right, let's Doesn't do that sound I guess. Doesn't sound so confident there. <laughs> I guess. I guess. I guess. <laughs> So it's been 13 years, guys, since since the last skate, and uh, crazy man, 13 I would love for years. You guys to let the people know what it means to you not only to work on the next <laughs> version of skate, but uh, to make the gameplay. Yeah, I guess uh, like a lot of people, right? When the first game, skate game came out, uh, you know, I spent a lot of uh, my summer just good times, good with times in the day, and then playing skate all night uh, and uh, and they get inspired by something you do in the game, take it to a skate park the next day and kind of have that feedback loop going, right? So it really kind of defined a lot of, um, of uh, one of my favorite pastimes um, and being able to actually work on a skate game now is pretty much, it's a dream project, right? So uh, yeah, very excited to be here. Sick. Yeah, super excited too. I've been at EA a very long time. It used to be on a baseball game way back when and we used to get beta builds of Skate uh, kind of before anybody else had played it. And I think I'd probably finished Skate 1 twice over by the time it was 
was released, so never got to work on Skate, but you know, was working one Saturday trying to get another, another game done. Darren happened to be in the office, came over, said a mutual friend, said I should probably talk to you about animation on Skate, and uh, from there, it was employee working, number one. Employee number one, working <laughs> on Skate, got to work at oh, 7 wow. a.m., worked under the table <laughs> so nobody else could see what I was doing for a couple hours, went back to my day job and did that for a couple months until we're here today. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, it's a similar story for me too. Like I remember being back in university and playing skate with my friends. And I was like in school for computer science. Um, and so I was thinking how cool it would be to work on a game like skate one day. So it's really like honestly a dream come true to be part of the That's project awesome. and, and working with you all. It's like, it's awesome. Okay guys, let's, let's start from the beginning. What is the most important thing about gameplay? What is so important? Yeah, I mean, for me, I think some of the most important things I'm looking at are uh, that we're still playing like a skate game, right? We still yeah. got that DNA. And also that we're building in these new mechanics like wallies and slappies and bone dollies. All this stuff, right? That represent more of what modern skating is all about and that we haven't really seen in skateboarding games before. Yeah, I think my focus is more on making sure that players have an ever-expanding kind of toolbox, right? That they have a lot of interesting choices and they can do anything they can really think of uh, and be creative with this toy. And that when you're doing that, it feels good, right? It right. feels very satisfying when you're doing these things and discovering these new things. And it's the core of our game, right? Yeah. Like it's the core of skate. Without skating, without the, our core skate mechanics, there is no game and mm -hmm. it's, it's fundamental. That's the one I mean, thing I kept saying, we, bro. Like this game has to feel, it has to feel like skate. It has to feel, it has to feel like skate three, bro. Uh, like if it doesn't, uh, I mean, it's gonna really flop. It's the hard things first, right? It's the things that are kind of more unknown. The things are risky. Things skate has never done before. Uh, we want to really make sure that we have time allotted for figuring those things out and make sure we can get it right uh, before we go back and do kind of things that we already kind of know how to do, right? The solutions for those other things can come a bit later. Um, the risky stuff is what we want to do now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that we have too that's pretty cool that lets us do some of that risky stuff is how we build things. Uh, we, we build it in a way where while the game is running, we can turn those new features and changes on and off, right? So if we want to experiment with changing like how fast you move in grinds uh, when you transition from one to another, we can turn that setting on and off. That's going to be interesting for trick liners, dude. Cool. Like, I, I really want to try that uh, feature uh, for trick lining. So Unfortunately, when I was playing the beta, like I didn't um, have that option to, to do that. So, how do we balance, you know, the the stuff where like we have this broad spectrum of gameplay where you can go really big and be really grounded? How are we balancing what we work on in terms of like those types of gameplay features? Yeah, well, I mean, really want to do both. Um, we're always trying to push like that's one of the strengths of skate is that you can go crazy or you can be really uh, technical, right? And you can do that all within the same world, same control scheme, same game. Uh, so we want to push both of those ends of the spectrum all the time. Um, and it really just depends on what mechanic uh, we're trying to prove out at the time. And it might fit into both, it might fit into one. Um, but really, we're always trying to make sure it can benefit everybody as much as possible. And the nice thing is they aren't always at odds with each other, right? Like, if I want to go super fast and launch off a mega ramp, um, that's kind of a different style of skating and occupies a different space in gameplay than, you know, like super techy, realistic lines. We really want, you know, realistic skating and we really want the over the top stuff. I mean, that, that is the DNA. Huh? Yeah. That is, that's right? Yeah. Okay. And we, when we capture it here, it's all real. It's all what the pro skaters do. It's like, just because we captured it here, it doesn't mean you can't do a back tail off of a roof, get into the air. I was really worried about that. They were, that they were trying to make this game like extremely realistic, bro. Like there's a lot of people, like trick liners, people that want to play this game to do tricks that they can't do in real life just to have fun and go crazy, you know? So I'm glad they're trying to find a balance for everyone. <laughs> But I do see them pushing realistic of, skating a lot, um, especially on social media. Like you never really see any kind of like of trick liners doing crazy tricks that they show. It's, I don't know, it's a little like. weird. So from a design standpoint, at least, what we normally start with is we're trying to identify like a goal for this mechanic, right? Like what intention is it meeting? Is it solving a problem? Is it uh, gonna unlock a bunch of new possibilities in the game? Something like that, right? Um, for slappies specifically, one of the things that we identified was kind of tricky in the game is curbs. 
curbs are everywhere uh, and you run into them a lot and you trip over them and it's not really a great experience if you're constantly timing these things and, and failing at it. For new players, um, for, for sure. new players, yeah. for sure, right? Like, uh, it can be fun and that's still there. You can do that at any time. Um, but Slappies just turns that kind of moment of crashing into a curb and running out into a cool trick, right? Now, so you just slam your board into the into the curb and you get a slappy and you can then use uh, you know, our actual grind system and do all kinds of different grinds in it. That's cool. Slappy nose blunt, yeah. whatever you want to do. From the animation side, we look at a lot of reference, a lot. We would look at videos, you know, how do you do a slappy 50-50? And then you watch another one that tells you to do a slappy 50-50 the wrong way. And then you watch another one and it's the first guy again <laughs> who'd redacted what he said and now does not <laughs> by bashing in the curves. And then from there, we end up looking at like, longer slappy vids there's a mcslappy's vid don't lift your front i've always appreciate the the minor research that they're doing as far as like for the mechanics of the actual gameplay so that's that's really good oh, you can do a slappy blunt that's how they do it this is what a slappy lip looks like right we just get a sense of what the variety is there get it down on a piece of paper for a shot list and then uh, call up some talent and come do it on the stage here for real so from a design perspective like from a creative perspective I'm like hey that sounds sick i want to do that and then goes to you and you're like okay let's figure out what the right way to approach it is animation is like problem solving code seems like it's a whole black box that i don't understand was was <laughs> lance was uh figuring out how to make slappies harder than learning 360 flips Ooh, that's a pretty tough one <laughs> um yeah, I don't know. I couldn't even say. I, I think maybe it's harder to do it in game to build these things. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty exciting though, too, right? Because we're looking at some of these features that, again, are like representing like what you see a lot in like modern skating videos, right? Like you just see it all the time where people are kind of bashing their board into stuff, right? We got slappies, we were working on wallies. That's something I was personally working on for quite a while. Um, it, and you know, it was something I was super stoked to come in and work on. Like, it was I, something that I never thought we'd be able to do. Like, wallies are insane. Well, yeah, me too. Some nights, for sure. But hey, um, you know, we got wallies some nights, in the daytime, game. Daytime, 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 daytime. Yeah, you know, I'm just thinking. So yeah. Um, but yeah, honestly, like, it was a pretty all these like maneuvers, all these new tricks, all these new mechanics. It's gonna make it pretty insane for trick liners, dude. Like, I've said this from the start. Like. Trick lining in this game is going to be not only difficult, but it's going to be on a whole different level, dude. It's going to be insane. It's going to be a lot of levels of trick liners on this game. Like what you're skating over, like a real skater would, right? Like they wouldn't just like bash into something if they could do a wally on it. So, um, you know, that first of all is like the first step gets me super excited to work on it. And I think that's actually a pretty key part is like having that like strong vision and like buy in for what we're building. So. I guess that got me kind of excited to go and like see what we have right now. What's in the game? How is it working? How are we going to take that from like, you know, your deck hitting the ledge of something and wiping out or slamming um, and turn that into, okay, now you're going to like pop your deck up and over it with your legs smoothly and like keep rolling, right? right so right. Um, first it's like kind of, you know, looking at breaking down what have we got. So right now when you do it, you slam. So where's the wipeout coming from, right? We have all these, uh, you know, physics calculations that are going on that throw these values back to us and we decide whether it's a wipeout or not. So it's like changing that logic and then making a decision to go into like a new Wally physics state. You're moving, you know, you keep your feet like traveling up and over the obstacle just like you would in real life. And actually it's kind of a complicated thing to do in real life. I haven't learned that one yet. So right, right. maybe that's the harder one really. Um, so I know that we we approach slappies and wallies a little bit differently like slappies we got mocap data for yeah. really really early on it just didn't work on the feature for a bit because we knew we wanted to do them wallies yeah. were like another thing that i don't think we really planned for but we were able to like you were able to work some magic and they're magically in game and we're going to get some mocap data wallied we'll eventually capture for wheel real but you know we just kept kit bashed pretty much our, our low mid and high ollies to make them look like a wally just placed a jersey barrier in front of them or a box in, in what the tool that we animate and just get something that looks like a wally and then you know there's three animations it's not an expensive thing to do it's a cheap way to fail to get them to go in there right. and then you know once the system settled down we'll get the, <laughs> get them in here for real right. for real well the other cool thing with it too is like building out these using these prototype animations was 
Um, you know, I'd try them out in the game and kind of see how it's performing. And then I'd talk to one of our animators and say like, hey, could you tweak it in this little way so yeah. the deck kind of levels out in this way? And then also like getting Wallies to work like front side and back side, right? Yeah. So doing little prototype animations for those kind of styles of Wallies. Yeah. Um, it was really, really quick turnaround time, right? And it lets us like prove- That little clip right there looked like a, a Skate 3 um, so it, it is uh, location. I forgot what it was called. I think it was called like something with ribbons. The thing that I love is that it- It looked like, like that little spot so there. Depth to the gameplay, right? Like for new players, it removes frustration for expert players or, you know, really skilled players. It, it gives them another system to really like leverage and do creative expression with, with their skating. And yeah, that, that's true. I mean, if you're doing slappies or wallies, like there's definitely like a sweet spot for getting a really nice one versus just like an accidental one, right? So it's cool there's that depth, like to get a really stylish, like nice edit from these new tricks, you can spend the time on it. And they layer into other systems, right? Like we, yeah. we've got leans now, right? So you can slappy and just roll onto the curb yeah. or um, pop, instead of popping off of a ledge or whatever, you can just like lean off of, right? Yeah, yeah we've got roll out and go, you can roll to the sidewalk and you roll back to the road. Um, you can pop the other direction, you can transition to another trick and then do that. Power slide into the slappy. Yeah, that's really, really cool. Lean really, really cool. Yeah, I didn't know yeah. how to do that. <laughs> Sick. What, what about like a blunt? Could you like roll out of a blunt? The game's gonna feel like more, it's gonna feel like Skate 3, but just more dynamic. Like it's gonna feel like you can just do a lot more with tricks, like especially. Right now, which is a little funky, but they feel great to getting them like fully fleshed out and, and tested, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I think we're literally not there yet because sometimes like you go to pop a wally and your wheels just don't hit the wall and you kind of whiff over it. So, you know, there's a few things we got to improve for sure. Um, you know, some other areas I'd like to see it is like if you're doing a front side or backside wally, a little bit nicer of a wall ride maybe instead of getting like shot 10 feet up in the air <laughs> when the bug happens. So, I look like yeah, the old pop glitch. Do, but the cool thing is uh, we kind of build this like functional representative version of it, right? We test it out ourselves within the dev team and then we've got, um, you know, community play tests that you know everyone is giving us this awesome feedback and you know testing it out for us and helping to guide us right so I think that's a big next step um, is gathering that feedback and then figuring out where those opportunities are to make it better just talk about how powerful that is right like in game development having that amount of feedback as we're developing the game while we're doing it to really hone in before we're like we're live live as a as a, a fully fleshed out product is is pretty insane right have you guys ever had any, any experience like that developing a game before? Yeah, uh, this is a pretty unique uh, process, I think, right? Like, um, it's great because early on in this iteration loop we were talking about before, like, we're still trying to prove out even just, like, basic controls for these mechanics, like, what's going to work well. Um, like, should it require really highly precise timed input or should it be more automated and contextual based right. and physics influenced or how should this work? Um, and having eyes on this so early from everybody, especially a large amount of players, interacting with in ways we didn't really think they're going to do or at least we weren't thinking about yet um we get tons of feedback on hey it works great yeah. here it doesn't work in these it was a really problems. good idea to open it up to like the masses and bring them in like yeah. in, in, in uh sections at a time like in, in certain bunches to really test the game and stress test it and all that so it's really good that they're doing that hand in hand with their development they're passionate right so but i mean i think it helps that they're passionate because like they want to be along for the ride right um, and like, like, I would, yeah, like exactly. imagine yeah, if like other companies did that, like with, with Call of Duty, right? like imagine when they're making like a Call of Duty, they also did that at the same that, time like, so they can, they can know, go we hand in hand developing it as they get early, input from sure the community in real time. Like that would be really cool. Maybe we would actually get a good Call of Duty now. And pretty unique opportunity for me to have that, yeah. I mean, I mean like, look at this forum, we're talking about yeah. it right yeah. now, and we're being transparent about like the way that we develop, which is brand new to me. I've never worked, I've worked in games for a really long time, and this is completely new territory. So, I mean, I love it because I know how f passionate our fan base is and how long they've been waiting for the game. And so it makes a ton of sense. And it's really exciting for us to be able to like open the door and show like, hey, we're working, we're, we are literally working on it <laughs> and we're doing our best. And like, we're really, really excited and passionate about like the stuff that we're building for you guys. So. so we just came out of Creative Week for the team, which obviously, as you guys know, is a week for us to work on any type of feature we're excited about for the game. It doesn't have to be something that's planned or not planned. It could be something that we've- Okay, let's know, see what they say about features here. We have the, the bandwidth to do it. Um, what are you guys excited about right now? What are you working on? 
Yeah, um, so I was super excited about uh, working on this new feature in transition skating during Creative Week. Transitions? Transition skating, a form of skateboarding that takes... Unfortunately, okay. I can't quite talk about what it is because it's a little early, but uh, I am very excited to see that, you know, lately we've been putting a lot of effort into improving our transition skating overall. It's been awesome that we kind of have the time to do it right now, and we're really looking at making, you know, transition skating the best it can be. Um, right. Yeah, there's a lot of potential there. Ryan, I'm not going to ask you what you're excited about. What are you the most frustrated with right now? Oh. <laughs> uh, so many things. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's always things to be improved, right? Like, there's always um, bugs and, and uh, tuning to do and everything. Like, I mean, earlier today, we were playing with um, uh, flip trick speed, right. Uh, right? And you can, it's awesome that you can control your flip trick speed now, right? Um, by how fast you actually flick the stick. But, um, you know, I always want to do like slow flip tricks on everything, and like, especially like a th slow 360 flip down a stair set or something. But sometimes, if you do it too slow, you don't even pop, and right. it's a Frustrating, yeah. It's a yeah. bad experience, right? So that's that's the kind of stuff I really want to fix. But at the same time, I'm excited about it because um, what I really like is being able to combine those things with our other new system. So um, our kind of extended suite of held flip tricks and late flip tricks and being able to do a That looks like a really cool spot. It looks like somewhere downtown. For something is awesome and something yeah. you can do before. So, yeah. Yeah, that's... From an animation perspective, I'm really looking forward to getting our held and late flip stuff looking good. Like pre in previous builds, it's been like a frozen pose of the skater right. with the board spinning, physics is taking control. It looks pretty bad, but we've been working on, you know, what, what is the animation? But they're fun. They're fun. So now that we know that they're fun, how do we take that, actually animate them to look, look properly? So, you know, we actually have nice held flips and we're playing around with like, you know, a held kick flip pretty easy to envision what that looks like. What is a held 360 flip? So if you hold it in the board, does, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a 720 rotation, or what about 1080 rotation under there, playing around with it. How good can we make that look? And, right. you know, can you pop for that? Or can you be in the air? And can you do a late flip version of that and playing around? Those are, those are pretty interesting and uh, fun to play around with right now. Can you? <laughs> can you? <laughs> yeah, you can right now. Okay. And, the, yeah. you know, they are looking yeah. a lot better. Mm -hmm. Oh, and we also have our, you know, our new city, our final city oh, yeah. that we're finally playing in, um, San Amsterdam, and players are oh, yeah. getting a chance to see it. Obviously, it's exciting it's pretty for me. good. I'm, I'm like the most stoked. I wish I can see it like spots. already in fully textured, and, you know, uh, its final version. Wasting too much time skating. Like, there's a lot of buildings. It looks like a legit playing. downtown. Yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Uh, one one random question I was thinking about: um, What is the feature that you're most excited for players to touch for the first time, like when we go live? I mean, I think for new stuff, it's uh, grind transitions, maybe. That's something I think just feels... Game changer. Yeah, it, it just feels a lot more natural than maybe what was in the games before, and it's uh, and it just opens you up to a lot more um, opportunities and creativity so easily. Right. Uh, but for things that existed before that are just a lot better is power slides. I, I really like the way our power slides feel. Yeah. Uh, it's really yeah, satisfying. Right. Matt. Uh, for me, probably the climbing, the ability to just get over a wall. Yeah, that's wall, that's a really cool feature. Space. I think that's one of my favorite features for sure, yeah, is the grappling and climbing and all that. Previous games after it, it's just <laughs> opened so much really doors for like really creative and dynamic trick lines. Like it's going to be sick. And then jumping at it like classic video game style and going nowhere. I mean, it changes. I mean, it's largely a horizontal game yeah. that makes it now vertical, right? Yeah. You can climb up yeah. things and stuff. The whole city becomes yeah. vertical, right? Yeah. 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 Which it, yeah. Which is also a curse. Sometimes you're trying <laughs> to be able to climb. You know that uh, game vertical. within Fortnite called Only Up? <laughs> lot, Imagine well. making that in yeah, Skate 4. And uh, guess what? I think you are going to be able to, honestly. Because I want to say, like, on a skateboard going over a wall, right? I'm really excited for us to get our wallies uh, in there and, you know, in players' hands. Uh, right. It's something that I just think... Um, it feels amazing when you really hit that sweet spot for it. And there's, uh, I know I talked about it a bit before with Wally's, but um, you know, there's a bit of depth there and gameplay around it, along with just like the easy traversal. So uh, yeah, pretty excited. I'm like, pushing has always been in the game, but I think our pushing is actually really sick compared to what it was before. It just feels really good. It looks really good. It looks natural. From a new, maybe not a new system, but it hasn't been fixed yet. I'm really looking forward to wall rides being- Wall rides. Improved better. Me too. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. that's one. Wall rising trick line was a pretty cool uh, yeah. thing to do. Oh, and, and we have a mocap shoot coming up. Yeah, we have mocap shoot coming up uh, in a little while. Uh, getting some new skaters in for this. 
be trying to get a bunch of style, different style versions of stuff that we already have in the game. So it'll be really fun to play around with that stuff and see where it goes. Speaking of which, we should probably go check on Cuz to see if he's got his suit on, you know, new styles and stuff. I don't know, let's see what Cuz is up to. <laughs> um, so let's wrap it. Thank you guys for your time. Oh, they're time not gonna show him actually. For uh, shedding some light for the players out there about how we work and the process of bringing you know, gameplay to light. Thank you guys for letting us nerd out and talk about gameplay and the stuff that we're really passionate about. So, uh, see you next time and thanks. <laughs> kind of awkward, but okay. Um, man, they didn't really show too much, but oh, what is this? Right, oh my God, cuz. Carbs, crazy carbs, Ollie Nowhere. <laughs> Ollie Nowhere? Well, they didn't really show anything too, too crazy. Um, I know a lot of you guys obviously haven't seen of these stuff. Half of these things I have seen before, but there's some that I definitely haven't seen. I'm I'm excited still. Like I'm it's not to the point where like it was back like in twenty between 2015, 26, 2017, maybe a little bit earlier, like twenty thirteen at a time where like I was really excited for Skate for and pushing for it and everyone else was. Like it just feels a little different, you know. I think the biggest thing is number one, they took forever to finally start a new something to the skate franchise, right? They took absolute forever. Number two, the name is called Skate with a period. Like, it just doesn't feel the same. Maybe if it was called actually Skate 4, then it'll feel a lot better. Um, but the name, I feel like, just has to do a lot with it. I don't know. The name really means a lot to, to especially the OG players, to all of us. Like, that's just a name that we really wished was going to come out as a game. You know, we just really anticipate it. But nevertheless, um, this game overall does look amazing. Uh, the the de developers are doing an absolutely amazing job. I can tell that they're doing a lot of research on, on the mechanics and, and real life skateboarding, just how the way things actually work. And they're trying to make this game as best as, as best as possible and make it feel like skate, like how it really is, not make it feel like a totally different game or like Session or Skater XL, or et cetera. But the thing I did wish they do more research on and really talk to is more of the OG community. They're just been talking and paying attention to a lot of the new guys that all of a sudden do Skate 3 videos or do repetitive glitches and transitions and, and, and freaking speed glitches and all that stuff. Like, I wish they would really focus on the actual OG uh, creators um, that really shaped what Skate is today, you know? Uh, myself included, Skater included, Sneaky Leroy, H -H -K -K -H -B, Homicide, I forgot his name, I think it's something like that. Um, I Kill for Joy, uh, Chuflanka, uh, Sneaky Leroy, Nabzi, uh, just to name a few. Those are like the legit OG players, right? And I just wish those were the people that they were really, really focusing on and paying attention to because those are the ones that, like I said, really shape what skate is today. You know, we had a huge influence and... That's the only thing that I wish that they would focus on more. But nonetheless, I, I appreciate that they're working really hard on this game and they want to release something that is going to be actually really good. That's going to feel like skate and they're trying their best. So you got to applaud them for that for sure.